Okay, so I'm going to be talking spoilers for episode one of The Bad Batch. So if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. It's incredible. It's great. You won't regret it. It covers, well, literally the end of the Clone Wars. Order 66 is, you know, like the first 10 minutes. And then we go right into the aftermath and what is happening to Bad Batch, which is a, a squad of genetically altered clones. Well, most of them are. One isn't. So yeah, go watch that. And then... Uh, come back. So if you stay past the sexy Papa Palpatine voice, spoilers for this episode. You're fulfilling your destiny. Okay, first I want to say don't get too spoiled by the fact that this episode was over an hour. From all the leaked episode lengths, it's likely going to be about 20 to 35 minutes in each of the further or future episodes. So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, every week we get more than an hour of Bad Batch, unfortunately no. I'm sorry. I would love to be proven wrong though, so Disney, do it. Something I'm sure was a little bit off to people, if you read the Kanan mini comic series that covers him during the time of the Clone Wars, basically the end of it, Order 66, how he escapes as a Padawan, it's different than what we saw in the opening of this show. How I'm explaining this in my own head canon is the Kanan mini series. oh, by the way, uh, Adult Kanan is the name he changed to, Caleb is him as a, as a kid. I know most of you know that, but there's going to be someone being like, bitch, what? Anyways, in his mini comic series, we see him in a Bacta tank and he is recovering from a critical injury and it's sort of him having visions of his past. So I'm taking it as incomplete memory or maybe just how he's choosing to remember it because if you look at how it happened in his comic miniseries versus how it happened in the Bad Batch episode one, he seems a bit more favorable to him running away in the mini comic series than, you know, it's just like one line from his master. And you could say the lightsaber color differences with his master is just you know, him misremembering because it was a very traumatic time and and so on. So I would say his mini comic series is the false memory or how he remembers it now as an adult and when he's in a back to tank healing and how it actually happened is how we see it in the Bad Batch episode one. Loved that we opened with the Clone Wars and Order 66 being executed. I never get tired of seeing the Jedi get what's coming to them. I just wish we could have seen more evil Jedi being taken down by loyal troopers. The explanation I think they're going with, with why Crosshair ended up betraying them, is just because of their genetic modifications, like they said in the episode, they didn't give in or to the programming like the other regular troops or regs did. But unfortunately, Crosshair's mutation, while it dampened it, it didn't completely quiet it like it seemed to with the rest of Bad Batch. And so that's why he turned on them, which is why Omega said, or Amiga, depending on what character's saying it. So he said, I know what you're going to do and I know you can't help it. And then once they amplified his programming the chip, it was, you know, game over. But kind of to tell the truth, I really didn't like Crosshair in the first place. If I were to rank the Bad Batch, I'd go Tech, Wrecker, Hunter, Echo, and then Crosshair would be like way, 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 way down there. I'm imagining Crosshair is going to end up training some troopers, new troopers, human troopers, uh, and then he's going to go after the Bad Batch. I'd imagine where the Bad Batch is going now is they're going to try to find friends, they need money and resources to survive now that there's, you know, going to be a price on their head. The Empire wants them rightfully dead for defecting. So they're probably gonna take jobs, become bounty hunters, go on missions, get money, resources. We're probably going to see them interacting more with the beginnings of the rebel scum, such we saw them talk to Saul Guerrera and some familiar faces in his camp. I think we're going to see once more that they end up reaching out to the terrorists and working with them more and more and building up the rebellion to take down the stable galactic government. I'm kind of eh on Omega. I guess I just don't really like kid characters, but I also understand that this is also geared towards kids and they want someone that the, the younger viewers can relate to. So having a bunch of adults and then a kid helps with that. It's kind of like why in the Clone Wars we got Ahsoka. It helps to have a kid. In fucking Rebels we got Ezra. You just always gotta have a, a, a kid hanging around. 
Gotta sell those toys, boy. I'm really hoping that she doesn't go the route of being a whiny, spoiled kid and we see her more put together because she's a genetically modified clone. I know there were hints that she was force sensitive and by saying that someone's gonna freak out in the comment section and go, not everyone has to be force sensitive. Yeah, no shit, dude. People just like to talk and go over possibilities. It's, uh, it's gonna be okay. If that's your trigger, go put your nose in the corner and keep it there. But I'm wondering if just her genetic modification made her more perceptive of everything and she's not actually force sensitive and you know the shot was just a, a lucky shot and, and so on and they're maybe just dangling it in front of us. Hunter and her's relationship though is kind of cute. Right? I, I kind of like the fact that you know they're all gonna be her dad but a Hunter uh, especially is going to be her dad. Not daddy. Dad. I was surprised that Freddie Prince Jr. voiced Caleb. I mean, I know that he, he voiced Kanan, so why wouldn't he voice his younger self? But it was, it sounded off, it sounded weird. I, I felt like it definitely was a, an adult that uh, wasn't good at mimicking a child's voice trying to do a child's voice. And I was like, oh, this is Friday Prince Jr. trying to do his character as a kid, isn't it? And then the credits came and I went, ooh, yeah. Yikes. Loved seeing Turkin, such a, a bamf. My favorite moment of his in the comics is when he visualizes taking off his shirt in front of a bunch of other Imperials and showing just how ripped and scarred up he is. You can call Tarkin daddy. So things I would imagine are going to happen in future Bad Batch episodes. I'd imagine we're going to see Darth Vader. I'm assuming we're gonna see Palpatine again, which by the way, was voiced by the man himself. We're gonna see Bail Organa, I have to believe. Stupid rules. And maybe even a, a baby Leia. Aww. So yeah, I love this first episode. I can't wait for the rest. I think there's another episode coming out this Friday, so that's uh, super exciting, even though it's probably not an hour. So let me know what you thought, like, subscribe, and which of the Bad Batch is your favorite? Thanks so much for watching. Please like the video and subscribe for more Star Wars videos.